What's up and welcome back to Nostalgia Pod, your weekly look at what's going on in pop culture. My name is Patrick Sheehan. Dave, my co-host is here, and I wanted to ask you, Dave, to start off the show. It was a fire weekend on Twitter. There was a lot happening uh, politically. Yeah. And okay. the NBA decided to just blow up uh, on Sunday. So yeah. uh, I wanted to ask, what was your favorite Twitter moment from the weekend? Oh, uh, LeBron calling Trump uh, a bum. I thought it was great. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, there was a great tweet about it. It was, uh, man, LeBron hasn't dropped 46 this beautifully since against Boston in 2012. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> that, that's a really, really great tweet. Yeah, I, it was funny. I, I think Carmelo getting traded was just, it was like the perfect breakup because I was starting to get a little bit tired of all the political takes. And all of a sudden, NBA Twitter is just like, oh, yeah, we're still the GOAT. And they just basically jumped into everything i was like ah, the nba is so good right now yeah well i it's was crazy i'm in the golden circle which we'll get to later on mm-hmm. and i'm like you know i'm like all right let me get my kingsman tweet ready and then i see oh fuck carmelo gets traded the one moment i'm not by my phone <laughs> <laughs> so i'm like right. I save that tweet for later have to tweet about carmelo right now can't uh, drown you... out. what are your feelings about that trade you know uh it wasn't really about out the uh, return uh phil jackson mm-hmm. made sure the return wasn't going to be good anyway he's what 33 anyway so it just it just needed to be he wanted to move on the knicks need to move on so they could build around porzingis and actually commit to you know not being a 30 to 35 win team and getting a you know mid-tier lottery pick you actually need to get a good lottery pick especially with a lot of bad teams so it need to be done, and honestly, they, I mean, they would have should, probably should have traded him a few years ago. But he's in a nice spot to uh, have some fun this year in Oklahoma. Yeah, it's it's definitely uh, interesting to see Oklahoma going for it so much. I think they're they kind of are reading the tea leaves and thinking Russ probably is going to leave, so they want to take one last shot before they have to do a, like a complete rebuild. But uh, yeah, Zen Master, man, fucking Knicks. Ugh. That guy fucking sucks. <laughs> so happy he's gone. Well, jumping to, to someone that we like a lot, Alicia Vikander, the queen. Yes. Queen Vikander, man. So Tomb Raider, we, we, we talked about a little bit last week. Tomb, Tomb Raider dropped the trailer the day that we were recording, or the day after we recorded, so we didn't get a chance mm-hmm. to talk about it. What did you think of this Tomb Raider trailer? Yes, yeah, so we had seen some set photos. We had seen the poster with... Uh, the really ex- long, extenuated neck for uh, mess up Photoshop, but uh, yeah. So mm-hmm. we had seen a little bit, um, and we always thought, you know, Vikander obviously really talented, and she looks the part. Looks like a Lara Croft. And mm-hmm. seen his trailer, most two most recent Tomb Raider games. Uh, it looks exactly like the games. It even steals like angles of scenes from the games, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, and Wall Goggins is there. We like him from Vice Principal. So a lot to say. I don't know how good the movie looks, but I know Vikander won't be the problem with it. Yeah, you know, I actually I wanted to shout out Walton Goggins. We uh we haven't gotten a chance to talk about him from Vice Principals, but um after Hateful Eight and then jumping into Principles, uh he's been on a bit of a heater. I, I don't think this movie necessarily needs to be good, but it looks like it could be a really good action movie. That was kinda, you know. I was listening to the Rewatchables Ringer podcast, and they talk a lot about action movies uh, mm-hmm. on that. And I was kind of just thinking, this movie just needs to be fun. Like, I don't need it to be winning yeah. Emmys. I just want it to be enjoyable. Yeah, and judging by the look of it, uh, similar to the, these these games, it's kind of about like her origin story of how she goes from like a archaeological ar- archaeological archaeologist <laughs> to a uh, uh, globe trotter, treasure hunter kind of person. So, and you know, female action. Uh, movies are in right now with uh, uh, mm-hmm. the Terminator news, which we'll get to, as well as uh, Wonder Woman, of course. So this is a good time. But I also was really optimistic about the Assassin's Creed movie, and that had a great cast as well. And that movie right. was god awful. So, so cautiously optimistic. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I, th- I think th- I think that's the correct response. Why don't we jump right into Terminator, though? Uh, so Terminator. Uh, we don't even have a title for it. A sequel of some sort. Or, the sixth one. Yeah, yeah, sixth Terminator coming out in maybe 2019 at this point. But uh, we did get some news on it. 
basically, just to summarize it, this is going to be a sequel to Terminator 2. Uh, we have Sarah Connor coming back, being played by Linda Hamilton, which is yeah. great. She hasn't been there since Terminator 2. And Schwarzenegger and Cameron are both going to be involved, which is yeah. very exciting. Also, Tim Miller directing. Yeah, that's interesting. So, I mean, Schwarzenegger, he's been in almost all of them. Was he in Terminator 3? That's the only one I haven't seen. Uh, he was he's in... been in all of them except Salvation, where they, they CGI'd what? him. Cameo on Salvation, right? And he was pl- well in Genesis, and that w- didn't turn out too good. That was when Amelia Clark playing Sarah Connor. So you're mm-hmm. bringing Sarah Connor proper back with Linda Hamilton, who hasn't really right. even been much of an active actor uh, recently. So... That's something. Uh, it sounds like Cameron wants to produce and not actually direct. I obviously what Tim Miller's involved. I think that's smart. And so, you know, a lot of people mm-hmm. compare Terminator to Alien with Ridley Scott and like, do we need to keep making these movies? You know, why would just let it go? And that, but yeah, you can keep doing Terminator movies. I think we just need to be less focused on what happens with Sarah Connor. Right the idea itself you know like skynet we have skynet in our pockets there's cool mm-hmm. ideas you can do with that you know it doesn't right. have to be about skynet killing everyone every time exactly you know i think uh as you were saying that one of the other pieces of news was that they're looking for an 18 something looking female to be like the next centerpiece for the story moving forward uh so in the same vein as something like blade runner which obviously they have harrison ford kind of ushering a new uh like blade runner in which is going to be ryan gosling or if you're looking to um uh, like star wars where they had the the old guard kind of passing off to the new guard it seems like this is what this movie's going to do yeah like so um, early stages, I don't even think they have even much of a script if anything even th- thought about, no treatment really. So uh, it's cool that they're getting Linda Hamilton to come back because just saying, oh, we got Schwarzenegger again, that doesn't really do anything for anyone anymore. Right. It needs to be a, a cool idea to justify, uh, you know, making people want to care. Cameron's going to be busy, dude. He's doing all these, uh, uh, all these movies all of a sudden. He hasn't really, wait, when was the last time he dropped a film? Three years ago? Yeah. Uh, he had since Avatar. Yeah, Avatar so, 2009. Some production work, I know that. Uh, so all of a sudden, he's going to be having all these avatars and producing a Terminator film. He doesn't... He's been busy. Here, I'm pulling it up. All right. Sanctum. What is Sanctum? I have no he, idea. He was an EP. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think he's directed a movie since... Avatar, because he's been... Working, so... And I don't believe he even did Genesis. Okay, wow. Well, it's good to have him back on these projects, at least. Uh, having some influence of the old story is important to, for continuity. Uh, speaking of, I don't know about old, I guess he's still relatively young, but Wes Anderson, a seasoned veteran yeah. say, of the game, uh, dropped his trailer for Isle of Dogs. And it's a... It's yes, he did. Turn to stop stop motion since uh, the Fantastic Mr. Fox, correct? Correct. Nine. Yeah. And I I really love this trailer. I, I want to hear your thoughts, but I I thought not only was the animation fantastic, but obviously the voice work and, and the people that want to do a Wes Anderson movie is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, read, I, I agree. Yeah. Just to I, read I, through it real quick, if you don't mind. Um, you know, like Edward Norton, Scarlett Johansson, Bill Murray, uh, Courtney B. Vance, Liv, Liv Shriver. Um, I mean, <laughs> getting these people, Jeff Goldblum, and just people who are fantastic voiceovers and respected actors. Uh, so, Dave, why don't we move on and talk about Macklemore's new album, Gemini? This is his first album without ryan lewis is that correct uh yeah for, first basically since the du- macklemore and ryan lewis became a duo uh he had some solo mixtapes and a solo album back in 05 was his last solo album so uh, yeah it's been a minute yeah. I, did, I always thought that they had been a duo it's interesting uh so i, I listened to this album if it, it seemed pretty forgettable to me uh i i didn't take a, a really critical listen but i was wondering it, 
I mean, I know you're a pretty big Macklemore fan, I think bigger than most of the people I'm friends with. Uh, what, what were your thoughts around this album, Gemini? Yeah, I mean, I think how you wanted you were coming into the uh, album to listen to, right? A Macklemore fan, like coming up, like I was kind of on to him before he blew up, uh, having fun. And he said this in interviews how he sees himself as a bit of a contradiction, you know. And uh, I think that kind of comes across this music because as a white guy, you can take off from, you know, caring about politics. So mm-hmm. that's, you know, I, you know, point that out. But yeah, I think, it, I think it's pretty forgettable. There's nothing nothing too good to really triumph. I think it's everything, uh, the whole narrative is just about Macklemore as a person, not really the music. Yeah, I, I think that the two songs, I, I don't even know if it's two songs, but one song really stood out was Willy Wonka, just really like, mm-hmm. it just had like a really great beat to it, I thought. Yeah, um, definitely. But, you know, I think just overall, I really like when he goes like soulful, even if, uh, even if it doesn't always like hit in the same way that, uh, like it's not like an old school song. Like um, what's the one about being Irish? I forgot what that Irish was celebration. Called. Yeah, Irish celebration. Like a song like that. I feel like when he goes soulful in that sound, I really enjoy him. So uh, he still is is a, a good artist. I just uh, yeah, and he's like I a great him. guy. Like he has a good message yeah. normally. Like he comes off well in interviews. But I mean, this isn't his best work. You know, honestly, listening to him talk about making the album, I don't think he tried to make it his best work. He he just kind of whipped up all these songs at his home studio at his house in Seattle. And he just kind of tried to make a song a day. And, you know, I mean, he paid for the offset first for Willy Wonka. And I agree. That's my favorite. He's got a little Yachty on there and Kesha and the rest is all right. like obscure Seattle artists, you know, mm-hmm. um, nice is uh, the very first song, whatever that's called, uh, Eric Nolly, the feature. He's yeah. the same guy from downtown. downtown oh, okay. Course. Gotcha. Uh, at a unique, uh, high pitch voice. But other than that, I mean, it's fine. You know, I, I think it's nice for Malcolm Moore to put out an album that doesn't have as much, you know? So, uh, yeah. if you're interested in Malcolm Moore, I'd say give it a listen, but it's not like required reading. No, definitely not. And I, that kind of brings us to our next album you're going to talk about. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. The Killers' eighth studio album. Pretty crazy. Wait, wait eighth uh, album? Really? I wrote down as their fifth album. They have eight I albums? get so they they I think they've released three like compilation albums which should technically be considered their albums uh, like uh, Sawdust was a they basically just like all gotcha. B sides from other albums uh, I don't know uh, right. they had a okay. direct hits album in 2013 but yeah uh, Brandon Flowers has two is, solo albums right mm-hmm. well Brandon Flowers I, I'm not even counting those with it they have uh, right. just but anyways uh, this album if if I had to describe it i would almost replay my whole conversation about the foo fighters last week not not saying that it was like a totally boring album but the killers i don't think are known for their albums as a whole they're more known for like individual songs i don't i think this is maybe their most complete album but it still kind of falls short of being an album where you're like oh wow they had a great narrative hot fuss always holds like a genuine place in my heart uh, just because it was it was right there when I was growing up, like 13, 14, really grabbed me. This album doesn't have a hit like Mr. Brightside or All These Things I've Done or When You Were Young, but they're all really solid songs, like six or sevens, I'd say. And I think you could really enjoy this album. It does some interesting things. Brandon Flowers is very quirky and very corny. Uh, and Woody Harrelson actually reads a Bible verse before a song called The Calling. So <laughs> does some interesting stuff. I just wanted to highlight one thing, before, and we don't even really need to have a discussion. I don't think this is a album that is going to be on anyone's end of the year best of list. But I want to read you this this lyric. It's from a, a song called "Some Kind of Love," which actually I think is one of their better songs on the album. He starts off and he says, "You got the will of a wild, a wild bird," and then later on he mm-hmm. says, "But you got the the soul of a truck." What the, yeah, huh. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, Brandon Flowers, very quirky, weird. Uh, it's a it's a solid list. I'd probably give it like a six or seven. So I just have a question for you in general about the Killers. Uh, yeah. So where do you r- rank or think of them? I didn't say rank, but how do you think of them as like the big of, of among the big 
uh, 2000s rock bands like the Strokes and uh, Arctic Monkeys? Like, how do you think about them compared to the other big, uh, big successes? Yeah, it, you know, I feel like I've been referencing this book a lot, but Meet Me in the Bathroom uh, by Lizzie Goldman. Um, yeah, by New York Rocks. Yeah, it, they talk about the killers and Kings of Leon in there. And basically they were like, we wanted to be rock. We are talking about like the Strokes, the National, people like that. But the killers wanted to be famous. And like that's really, they, they make music that is rock, but it's like indie pop rock. It's very accessible. People can enjoy it. Um, yeah, they're they're always like over the top, like quote like too much, right? Like, and this is just kind of yeah. them doing that again. Yeah, it, they they always and they try to make each song like an anthem almost. It's you know they they just want to make a they want to make it only Mr. Brightside. And I think when you have a song that like captures people the way that some of their like their first album did, like all these things I've done or Mr. Brightside or even somebody told me, you're always going to be trying to replicate that. Right. Just kind of the way it just yeah. it, Makes sense. it's what they know. Yeah. Uh, why don't we why don't we move towards wrapping it up though with Kingsman, the Golden Circle. Yeah, yeah. Thirty nine yeah. million domestic, one hundred point two worldwide. But it, it dethroned it. Mixed reviews. Dave, is this a movie people should go see? Yeah. So so Pat, Pat did you watch, see the first Kingsman, The Secret Service mm-hmm. from two thousand fifteen? Love it. It's, it's a, I think it's a really great movie. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I'm a big fan for sure. So th- the sequel is directed by Matthew Vaughn, who directed the first one, as well as uh, X-Men First Class, British mm-hmm. director. Uh, very popular right now. A lot of people want him to direct another franchise. Um, so he's a, definitely a hot name you'll see thrown around uh, often. Right. And yeah, so the Golden Circle, as you uh, said, it's, it's kind of got mixed in the critics. Uh, 50% on RT, Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, which is less than Mother's 67%, which we talked about last week, if you're interested. Um, but they got a B-plus cinema score, which is right on par with the first film. So I think it, it meets audience's expectations. And if people should go see this, and I think if you like Kingsman, if you saw the first one, if you you know want to re- revisit that world again, then absolutely go see The Golden Circle because it's a damn good time. It's okay. a lot of fun. Uh, it's bigger than this, the, the original. As you might have guessed from the trailer, there's a lot of additional A-list actors added yeah. to the mix. Uh, the cast Chang is Tatum. crazy. Yeah, Chang Tatum, Pedro Pascal, Jeff Bridges, Julianne Moore. Halle well. Berry. Yep, she's there. As well as uh, Colin Firth Returns, which was spoiled in the trailers, which Matthew Vaughn was not happy about, as well as Mark Strong and the lead, Taron Egerton. So it's got a lot of talent. Good uh, work, I'd say. How the fuck do they just yeah, so they spoil that Colin Firth is coming back? That's so stupid. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. So if spoilers for the first Kingsman, uh, but there's a, a really pivotal scene, and Colin Firth uh, is no more at the end of that scene. Full in it, 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 it uh, affected Exy Taron character in a great way, and really ushered in the third act, and it worked really well. And if you want to bring him back, that's fine. I mean, we, it's believable that you could, you know, world, but to spoil it in the trailer like Colin Firth doesn't sell tickets why would you do that uh, exactly it's the way that big like, ah moment at the theater so it's that's disappointing but you know I think this movie they're not necessarily better you know I mean the script is probably not as smart as the first one the first one had a great performance and uh Sophia Butella was there as his like badass sidekick but Julianne mm-hmm. Moore as the villain this time she kind of plays like a said a lot of times but she's like obsessed with like 50s americana like the, she's like a 50s housewife okay. uh there's this awesome El- elton john recurring bit like elton john's in the movie in several what? scenes which is hilarious <laughs> that's great so i guess they were able to make that work <laughs> but uh yeah so it's i think it's still a lot of fun so got a lot that charm that style that you expect from the kingsman world all right, folks, uh, we've had some technical difficulties today. Part of the uh, difficulty of recording this remotely, unfortunately. But we wanted to say thank you for listening. Uh, please support Nostalgia Pod. We promise to have our issues figured out by next week. Share us with friends. Rate us on iTunes. Uh, leave us a review. Uh, subscribe on YouTube, somewhere where I'm pointing, hopefully. Uh, 
Also, uh, go to soundcloud.com slash nostalgiapod where you can access any way you want to listen to the show, whether it's through SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher. I mean, maybe we're not on Stitcher. You know I never remember this stuff. Uh, follow Dave at Martin Swagger. Follow myself at Sheeny World Peace without the O. Uh, and follow the pod at Nostalgia Pod. Tweet at us what you want us to be talking about next week. We're going to be doing a lot of TV catch-up. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, bringing our reviews to you on things like the Deuce, Vice Principles. Uh, you know, maybe we'll even talk Rick and Morty, which should be moving towards a close. South Park is back. Broad City's back. There's a lot going on. Um, if there's anything you do want us to talk about, please tweet at us. And uh, yeah, we love you. Have a good week. Later, guys.